back. And now, more of the Weather Classroom. There's almost as many different kinds of weather jobs as there are different kinds of weather. And a lot of meteorologists got their start because of a really great teacher. Teachers inspire us and challenge us. They make us work when we don't really want to, but they also get us interested in things that may turn out to be a very cool career. We met up with a teacher who's also a meteorologist with a pretty unusual job. Our man Jason hooked up with him out in sunny Southern California. Check it out. Here on Coronado Island, just across the bay from beautiful downtown San Diego, people come by to hang out by the water, watch the boats and airplanes. But just on the other side of the island, the boats are bigger, the planes are a lot faster, and a friend of ours, Tom Baker, works with a lot of other Navy forecasters to keep them all out of trouble. My name's Tom Baker. I'm a high school math and science teacher at Moore Park High School in Ventura County, but I'm also a United States Naval Reserve Petty Officer, second class, aerographer's mate. Navy forecasting has its roots in aviation, especially during World War II, and we lost many ships due to typhoons over in the Western Pacific. There was a charter developed to have aerographer's mates. With my Navy experience, I encourage kids to join the military. Well, if someone joins at an early age, say 18 years of age, and they join, uh, they go through boot camp, they end up uh, uh, then going to A school. A school is the equivalent of uh, four months of very intensive weather training. The most unique thing about doing Navy weather is they give a lot of responsibility to, um, you know, guys even just coming right out of high school and into their specific schools they go to for the Navy, but they give you all that training, and when you get there, you're actually practicing it. Nowhere else do you have the opportunity for travel, for forecasting weather in places on this earth that you never dream of being in, you know, from the poles of the north down to the caps of the Antarctic. In the Navy, you can do it if you want to. You can go all over the world, and everywhere the weather's different, and then when you get down, you know, to the uh, southern hemisphere, then you get to do it backwards. <laughs> People uh, become weather forecasters probably for a number of reasons. Mine was I was locked out of the house by my sister who slammed the door on my face in a summer day where a thunderstorm was going on. And I couldn't get in and I was absolutely petrified. Well, that started me off on an absolute fascination with weather, of course. And his love for weather, it's, it's contagious, it's infectious. Every, everything hinges on the weather, you know. I'm sure before, before the planes fly off, before the ships take out, you got to know what the weather is, where you're at, you got to know where it's going to be, and you, you've got you've to gotta have the tools to be able to forecast that weather, because it's, it's important. So, Tom, where are the planes and the boats and the jets? Jason, they are less than a minute away at Naval Air Station North Island, right near us right now. <laughs> you got to show me. I will. Let's go. Finally, we're going to see some big boats. Hello again, Jason. This is the, uh, the weather office. The weather plays a big factor in every facet of shipboard life. They can't do an airstrike until you give them the report. Oh, no. No, they do not. We got action. Where's the captain's seat? Over there. The captain's seat, I found my spot. Three, Three two, two, one, launch! Oh, and there it is! Uh, All right. Now, that's weather. Navy style. Jason, the bottom line is you don't have to have a math genius mind or a science mind. You have to be interested in the weather. You have to want to learn. You have to want to work with other people. The Navy has afforded me a wonderful opportunity to learn everything about weather and go a lot of places. All right, guys. It was great. We'll see you later. Thanks. See you later. It's, it's a pretty cool job. I enjoy it. Join the Navy, see the world, and have fun doing the weather at the same time. <laughs> so, yeah, it's there for you. Now they're ringing a bell, so I gotta go get information. Man, all this stuff makes me want to be a Navy meteorologist. Sir, man, working alone. Do not rotate, radiate, or any designated electronic equipment or men are working alone. Avoid John C. Stennis. Now, Tom and the other Navy forecasters here in San Diego have pretty cool jobs. But the truth is, meteorologists work in all types of places and do all kinds of weather work. Now we're done here. But well, we're going to take a peek at a few others that have really got their heads in the clouds, doing what they love most. Check it out. 
My name is Shirley Murillo. I am a research meteorologist for NOAA uh, Hurricane Research Division in Miami, Florida. Weather is, is something that we have to deal with every day. We can't control it, so we might as well just prepare for it. You know, I wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is turn on the weather channel, find out what's going on. During the hurricane season, uh, we have weather briefings. We talk about any missions, any flight missions we want to do, um, who's interested in flying. Everybody usually asks, oh, do you fly on top of the hurricane and then go down into the eye? And no, we fly straight into it. I mean, that's something. It's constantly changing. I think that's the best part about meteorology. I think what keeps me going every day is, is the fact that uh, I impact lives and uh, try to save people and uh, property too. If you're really determined to, to do it and to pursue a field like meteorology, you should go for it. Uh, my high school was hit by a tornado and, and that was my first experience with weather really and, and that's when I developed an interest and, and really wanted to begin learning about weather. And I wanted to be a pilot but uh, couldn't. And so I decided to figure out, well, how does weather affect aviation? And one of the things that we're looking for in the future is to develop a product that people can use around airports that would provide them with a 3D graphical display of what's going on in terms of weather. As a pilot is flying into the airport, they may see a gust front out of a thunderstorm. They may also see a downdraft that may have been produced by a thunderstorm. One of the nice aspects related to NCAR is that it has a visitor center. And in this visitor center, anybody from the public is invited to come in and giving them a sense of uh, what we really do here at the National Center for Atmospheric Research. At the end of the day, I go home. I understand that the research that I do can have an impact on humanity. The Weather Channel is to weather what MTV is to music and we have the best and the brightest people here working to make the Weather Channel what it is today and Vermisha was the winner of the 1999 American Meteorological Society Minority Internship. I'm always learning something new, there's always something interesting going on. Vermisha came in and she trained with some of our forecasters in the morning. Well there have been some severe weather outbreaks and some tornadoes but I haven't gotten a chance to see a land-falling hurricane. So. And she spent some time working on project work with me. She even had a chance to make an on-camera demo tape. So I look at the wall. Like, yeah. Oh, we have a dangerous heat zone in parts of Oklahoma City. <laughs> oh, this is hard. Yeah, we'll get we'll get it fixed. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you love weather, the Weather Channel is the top place to work. There's no place else with better weather. Hey. The Weather Classroom will be right back.